Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jackie and I'm a self-taught software engineer based in London and I currently work at Amazon Prime Video. If you're confused about the background, I'm currently at my parents' house in Portugal, but I had the idea of filming a part two for my dressing up as iconic programming languages video. And when inspiration strikes, you just execute, you just do it. You guys really enjoyed it and you gave me lots of ideas of programming languages that you wanted me to dress up as. Some of them, I honestly had to Google them because like, what the hell? So today I have a few more personalities and a few more outfits to show you. And just like before, your job is to tell me how accurate these personalities are and what you would change about them. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have SQL. SQL is posh and old, and she constantly hates on your grammar. SQL has three masters and two PhDs, and unfortunately, she suffers a little bit from OCD. Her prime research work was the paper called A Relational Model of Data for Large Shared Data Banks. And in this paper, she basically invented herself, and it was amazing. But then she sold her soul to capitalism, and then she became the mainstream but iconic query language that she is today. Now, SQL or SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a domain-specific language that's used to write programs to interact with data in relational databases. It is very useful in handling structured data or data that has relation among its entities and variables. The scope of SQL itself includes data query, data manipulation, such as updates, deletes, inserts, etc., data definition, which are things like creating schemas and updating schemas, and also managing the data access control. SQL was initially created in the 70s by Chamberlain and Boyce, and it is based on the relational model by Edgar Frank Cott. SQL was created at IBM, and it was originally intended to interact with the database management system, which they had at the time, which was called System R. I'm the R programming language. Now, R is a bit of a nerd. R is very smart, but a little bit shy, and she's the type of person that always ends up doing all the work in a group project. First of all, because she has incredibly high standards, and second of all, because she prefers to do the work herself than having to redo it after because it's not that great if her colleagues do it. R always knows these super random statistics that honestly no one really cares about. For example, that there are 293 unique ways to make change for a dollar. She's a Kegel Grandmaster, and in her free time she plays Animal Crossing on her Nintendo Switch. That's a great game. So R is a programming language for statistical analysis. It was created by two professors, Ross and Robert, and it is predominantly used for data mining, data analytics, and for creating statistical software. The language was created in 1991 at the University of Auckland, where both professors worked as statistics professors. R was released to the public in 1995, Apparently 1995 was a very popular year for programming languages, and it is currently maintained by the R core team. Next up, we have Rust. Now, Rust is that really cool, smart guy that always saves the day. He is an engineer and he's also a startup founder who managed to get investment and support from the big tech companies. Rust is becoming extremely successful and he has amazing memory. He never forgets anything and he always knows where all of his possessions are. His life motto is take ownership and he developed a morning routine that sets him up for success. And he calls his morning routine the borrow checker routine. However, Rust is very opinionated and he's kind of hard to please. But once you learn how to deal with him, he's an amazing friend, an amazing mentor, and he will never let you down. Now, Rust is a general purpose programming language and it focuses on performance and safety. It is known for helping developers create more robust and secure applications, especially because it reduces the likelihood of memory security issues and it gives us better error messages. Rust is used to write operating systems and microcontroller apps, but it also finds applications in databases, web applications, and others. Rust was created by an engineer called Graydon at Mozilla in 2006, but it had its first stable release in 2015, and it has been adopted by many big companies ever since. And next up, we have Swift. On the surface, Swift seems to be the mean, popular it girl, but she's actually very smart and misunderstood and all she wants is to be loved and accepted by the world. Swift is a model and she often does campaigns for Apple to advertise their products. She's also addicted to Twitter and she tweets all day long. So Swift is a general purpose programming language and it was developed by Apple in its open source community. 
It was first created in 2014 as a replacement of Objective-C, even though it supports and it interoperates with existing Objective-C code. It is mainly used for building applications for iOS, Mac, Apple TV, and the Apple Watch. However, it was designed as a multi-purpose programming language, so its application is not just limited to building apps for Apple products. Swift can also run on Linux and on Windows OS. Yes, you guessed it right. This is assembly. Assembly is God. Assembly is the creator of all things. He practically invented programming without even using Google, which is extremely impressive. Assembly is very, very old, very wise and very capable. However, Assembly is only comfortable working in his own house. If you ask him to work in a different type of house, he won't. He would have a midlife crisis and would need to reinvent himself in order to do that. Assembly is a bit of a difficult person to work with because he's always telling everyone to go to places, if you know what I mean. Assembly always wants to do it all himself, no matter how long it takes or how difficult it is. He will find a way. If you ask him to help you with your algorithms homework, he will start by explaining the Big Bang Theory and he will end at the laws of logarithms when all you really wanted was some help in reversing a linked list. I have some cotton in my mouth. Please like and subscribe for the beard. I also have it in my nose. So assembly is a low-level programming language that is converted into executable machine code through an assembler. And because assembly depends on the machine code instructions, it is coupled to specific computer architectures. So high-level programming languages are usually computer architecture agnostic, meaning that they don't depend on an architecture, but that's because they have a compiler or an interpreter that translates the source code into low-level code before it gets executed. So for assembly, we save on the compiling step and we assemble all of the various parts of the program into a one single program and then we execute that on the machine. Assembly was invented by Kathleen Booth in 1947 at the University of London and she was a British mathematician and computer scientist. This will be fun to take off. So this is all I have for you for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave it a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments how accurate you think these personalities are. Also, as a side note, this video is just for fun. All programming languages have their own purpose and they're all useful for some things and I don't mean to offend any of them. So yeah, this is everything and I will see you in my next video. Bye!